this is Judy from Patterns for Pirates and I'm taking some time to sew just for me. It might be a little surprising to hear that I don't get very much time to hobby sew, which means sewing anything that is not strictly for a new pattern. Usually I draft a new pattern, sew up some testers, work on the computer for a long time, drafting, doing math, doing finished measurements, yardage, cut charts, all of these things. I really enjoy the drafting part. All the other stuff is a little bit tedious. I also then sew up the garments that are gonna be used for pictures in the tutorial. I sew up the garment again to take videos for any tricky parts. And then I also try every pattern to sew up every single option for myself, just so I can show off all the different options and I can have comparing pictures on the same body. Because often it's hard to see the different options in all different bodies. You can't really tell the difference, let's say between mid-rise and high-rise very well on two different people. Maybe they have two different heights, two different rises, one has a longer torso, shorter torso. So I try to sew up all the options so that you can see the differences in the different options on the exact same body. Um, so most of the time when I'm not at the computer doing math or charts, I'm sewing just for that pattern release, which is fun. I always enjoy it. Um, even though a lot of those times I am kind of narrowed in on what I can do creative, creatively. So what fabric I can use is often based on what I think will picture nicely for tutorials. Things like, does it have a front and a back? Um, if it's too dark or too light, the pictures don't always show that detail like you need them to. Um, also pictures, even for final pictures, I love black. I love wearing black. I also love navy. Um, I love a dark hunter green. I, I enjoy darker colors basically in my wardrobe, but I very, very seldom sew those colors for myself because not only I can't take tutorial pictures with them, I can't take at least good tutorial pictures for them. I can't take good videos with them. Um, and then even in final pictures, they're really hard to get the detail shots. You can't see where seaming is. You can't see the details like darts and things. So I just don't get to sew those colors even though I truly enjoy wearing them. Um, so I often have a list going in the back of my head of if I can sew for fun, right? Um, and today I decided, today's the day. I'm gonna take some time away from work after putting out the Chrissy pattern and sew something that I've been wanting to sew just for me, for fun. And I thought I would share it with you guys. Um, and if you enjoy it, maybe I will get a few more chances to do this if you like watching me. So what I have is I've already bought fabric for it. That's how much I've wanted to do it. This is a, let me see if I can remember what it is exactly. It's a stretch woven from Joann's that I got. And actually I was highly influenced by one of our testers during the Janet Jeans. She used this, I think in the stretch twill, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's a beautiful color. It's that dark, it's a dark olivey green. It's got a little blue to it, but I wouldn't call it hunter exactly. Somewhere in between a dark olive and a, and a hunter. Um, it's got nice stretch, but not too much. Um, I have a zipper left over and I even bought thread to match because I knew I didn't have this color in my rainbow of colors over here. What I'm planning to do is I saw um, these shorts a ton of times um, and I kept getting them in my social media feeds because I clicked on them the first time I saw them. I just thought they were so cute. I love all the pockets. I love the high rise. I love the fit. I love the shorter inseam. Um, 
but these shorts were very, very, very inexpensive, which you think, okay, great. But I figured if they came, if I ordered them and I came in, they would not be sewn very well. They would not have good quality fabric. Um, probably not a very nice work environment for whoever was sewing these, things like that. Um, also, I'm very tall and I'm very curvy and store-bought things just usually don't fit me, especially if they're not specifically made for a curvier body. Um, so even though I clicked on them and I looked at them and I wanted them, I knew I couldn't order them. They would not work out. Um, so I saved them as an inspiration and the Janet jeans are perfect for these. Um, they have the darts and they have a few more pockets on the side here, which I think are adorable and I'm absolutely going to try to mimic, but otherwise this is almost exactly like the Janet jeans. It'll be super easy to take the Janet jeans and get this look right here. And so I bought the fabric thinking I might have time during testing to just squeeze it in there. And um, of course I didn't. We all have um, really optimistic hopes on how much we get to sew, right? Um, almost always I buy more fabric for um, pattern sew ups than I get to. And um, especially ones like this where I want to alter the pattern, they get put at the very end of the list since I need to sew up all of the options given and shown first um, for my job. So I have washed my fabric. It's ready to be cut. I am going to iron it before I lay it on my cutting table. It's something I highly recommend when you're working with any kind of woven fabric and even a lot of knits if if it has been folded for a long time and it has any sort of wrinkling go ahead and press it first it doesn't take long it doesn't need a ton of pressing most fabrics um the ones who do need a ton of pressing it's even more important to take your time to pre-press your fabric because if you cut it out while it's wrinkly and then you're pressing it as you're sewing it, you're gonna have a different shape pattern piece than what you cut. So it's really important to pre-press your fabric, especially those fabrics that can get a little wrinkly. I think it's especially important with woven fabrics too, because they're just less forgiving than the knits. Um, I have already altered my pattern. If you have followed me for a long time, you know I always add length. I'm 5'10", so I add a little length throughout, and um, even though I draft for an hourglass curvy figure, I am still slightly more curvy than the chart, so I have to grade, currently I have to grade from a small waist to a large hip. Um, so I've already done that to my pattern pieces. So let's get sewing. I'm gonna cut these out and then you guys can join me along with the modifications that I'm gonna make to make the Janet jeans look like my inspiration picture. Have to have that audio book on y'all. Lights off for the projector. And here is my cutting table projector setup. I really like to move my grid so that it's perfectly aligned with my grain lines, the grid on my cutting mat that is. I have a really big cutting mat and cutting table. I'm really lucky with that. Um, my cutting mat is about 60 by 40, I think. And my table's a little bit bigger than that. My projector is mounted on the ceiling. I cannot even begin to pretend to help anybody pick out a projector and mount it on the ceiling. I'm not going to lie, it was a journey and it was a lot of research on, you know, throws and the distance and everything. So, um, it is well worth it though. I love my projector. I love it having on the ceiling. I never have to change it. It's the exact same throw, the exact same time. No one ever jostles it. So, I do love it mounted on the ceiling. The only thing I did different when I was cutting out the Janet jeans was I cut the inseam a little bit shorter because I was just going to hem them versus folding up a cuff. And then I made the belt loops a little bit thicker because I thought the inspiration picture had a little bit thicker belt loops. 
and then I cut those little extra pockets on the front. I just eyeballed those looking at the patch pockets, trying to make them about the same size as my inspiration picture. Then I used the front patch pockets, but I curved that part where you stick your hand in the pocket because that's what my inspiration picture looked like and it was a really easy modification. You can see I still use a lot of pattern weights. I highly suggest you still use pattern weights. Keep your fabric from moving around while you're cutting so you get an accurate And I'm cut. so sorry, I recorded this vertically. Y'all, the amount of times that I forget to record something vertically or horizontally, depending on if it is for a shorter video or a longer YouTube, you don't even know the amount of deleted videos that <laughs> trashed because I accidentally recorded it the wrong way. It's so difficult to remember while you're in the moment sewing and trying to record to do the right one. At least it is for me. And on this one, I was trying to get both some horizontal for this longer video and some vertically for some shorter reels too. So forgive me, please. I'm going to speed up sewing here because this isn't really a tutorial on how to sew these. Basically, I follow the exact same Janet tutorial. Really, the only major change is those front little pockets on top of the patch pockets. And I'll show you a little bit more detail on those. Right here, I'm sewing the little tabs. If you guys have the Uptown Joggers, I sewed the tabs really similarly to that. Um... Make sure you add some interfacing if you want to do the snaps. I did. I wanted them to look just like them because I just thought they were so cute in the inspiration picture. So I added interfacing on both the main and the lining on the tabs. And I also added interfacing where the snap would be on the little rectangle part, the patch part of the pocket. If you have watched any of my videos before, you know that this is a brand new sewing machine. And I actually planned on doing an unboxing for you guys, and I got a little shy about it and decided that I would instead interview my mom about this sewing machine because this was actually a gift from my mom and my dad, and she picked it out for me. Um, she asked me if I wanted to pick it out or if I wanted her to pick it out, and I actually really trust my mom's opinion way over mine. She's been sewing a lot longer. And she actually keeps up with all the new sewing machines and um, what's a good buy versus, you know, maybe not such a good one to purchase. So I trusted her completely. And if you guys have any questions for my mom, I'm going to be doing that interview soon next time she comes over. Um, she was a little shy about it. I guess that's where I get my camera shyness from. But if you guys have questions about buying a new sewing machine, now's your chance to throw them in the comments and I can ask her. And here are those little tab pockets. These are the tops. Sewing them right sides together and then flipping them around. You can see that little interfacing I have. And I add interfacing on both sides, the lining and the main. I'm using heavy duty metal snaps, so definitely need that. I actually added two layers on this little um, patch part because I was worried that those heavy duty metal snaps needed it. It's just one layer of fabric on that patch part of the pocket. So I went ahead and ironed on two layers of interfacing just to make sure it's nice and um, sturdy. And I took a break right there to iron. Um, in all my videos, I plead with everybody to press all their seams. Press, 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 press. It's one of the most common things I see when people aren't happy with sewing clothes for themselves. Um, why maybe it doesn't look as professional as they wish it would. Doesn't fit quite as nice as they think it should. And usually the answer is pressing more. I know a lot of sewists don't enjoy that part of sewing, but um, if you just get it into your routine, it really becomes part of the sewing. And um, it's actually really satisfying to press. And I'm not going to say get it perfect because I don't think going for perfection 
really equal success a lot of times, but just see it turn out beautifully. How about that? When you press it, it just makes everything a little bit crisper, a little bit nicer, lays better. You're just going to be all around happier with your garment if you take the time to press after each seam. And you might think that will take a lot of time, but once you know how to assemble your pattern, you don't need to do it in order of the tutorial, which is what makes the most sense when learning how to put this garment together. What I do is I sew the first step of all the pattern pieces, then take all of those to the ironing board and continue kind of in that assembly line style. Here are the little pockets. This is really the only big change. Again, I curved this little part on the hand. These are all folded under right here on uh, the edges that are going to be sewn directly to the pants. I'm going to use these heavy duty metal snaps again. Um, I think these are 5 8 maybe. I, I, I can't remember exactly. They're just um, your everyday metal snaps. Nothing special. But I'm just going to place them here and then the other one on the bottom. And you want to make sure to do this before you sew them all up. I just think it's easier before you sew them all up to do it. Um, you could wait until the very end, I guess. I like to do it while it's still easy to get to. And if something tragic happens, you can cut out a new pocket still at this point whereas if you have sewn up your entire garment and something tragic goes happen with this hammer situation then you're going to be much more upset luckily nothing happened with mine um they went on smoothly here's one other change that i did i made the belt loops thicker especially the front belt loop i made it match right here now one thing that i forgot was that once i sewed the seam allowance is going to be thinner so mine actually don't match perfectly like the inspiration picture but you know what that's okay if i would have ordered the super cheap ones from lord knows where then they probably wouldn't have matched perfectly either that's why i tell myself we're not here for perfection we're here for cute and comfortable that fit us so Next time, if I make another pair like this, I'll remember that seam allowance. <laughs> we all make mistakes. That's okay. And here we are. I absolutely love how they came out. I think they're super cute. Um, the details make them fun, but the color kind of makes them something that I can wear all the time with a lot of my wardrobe. The fit is great it's a little on the loose side um, which is perfect I like my shorts looser than I like my um, jeans in general so I'm really loving the way they fit this fabric is really soft and stretchy so super comfortable and I got to sew exactly what I wanted in the fabric that I wanted um, <laughs> it's really fun for me I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me.